everyone and welcome to these lectures on physicochemical processes for wastewater treatment. So, in the previous uh, lectures we studied different unit operations which can be used for treatment of water and wastewater and we started with flow equalization basin followed by aeration, then we studied coagulation, flow collation, settling followed by filtration, then adsorption. So, similarly in the similar to adsorption there is another operation which is very common in water or wastewater treatment which is called as ion exchange. Previously we understood uh, during the water quality analysis section that a number of ions are undesirable and these ions may be toxic may not be toxic. Some of the non-toxic ions include like magnesium, calcium, sodium all those parameters which are not desirable for various designated uses. So, like uh, we do not desire hardness to be present. So, calcium and magnesium ions are never desired to be present in the water if the water has to be used for industrial applications including like steam generation. So, we want the calcium magnesium to be removed. Similarly, in many places we want the sodium to be removed. In addition, there are a number of ions which may be toxic in nature like cadmium, arsenic, all those materials. So, we can also remove these toxic ions using ion exchange method. So, ion exchange method can be used to remove hardness. Uh, hardness by removing the calcium magnesium ions. Also, it can be used for removing various toxic ions also. And as the word shows, uh, whenever we are doing ion exchange, so one of the ions will be adsorbed and another ion will be released. So, we have to cross check all those conditions whether the resin that we are using or the ion exchange material that we are using is good enough the exchange ion is within the permissible limit or uh, these things we have to cross check. Now, it is ion exchange is like a reversible reaction in which a charged ion in the solution. So, that charged ion may be uh, any of the undesired material so, that may be calcium magnesium that can be any toxic material and that is exchange for a similarly charged ion uh, which is already electrostatically attached to the immobile solid particle. So, uh, this undesirable charged ion is exchanged by a not that much undesirable charged ion which is already there on the immobile solid particle. So, we exchange that ion. So, uh, this is ion exchange process is used in the water treatment very commonly uh, for softening for uh, where calcium, magnesium and other polyvalent cations are exchanged for the uh, with this by exchanging with sodium. So, this is very very common. Ion exchange type of unit operations may be from very small scale to very big scale. So, they can be used in the individual homes, they can be used in the municipal systems, they can be of very very big size and uh, they can be a little they can be used in the very small scale at the individual homes also. Ion exchange can be used to remove some specific contaminants such as arsenic, barium, nitrate, tradium etcetera. So, this is also possible using ion exchange. So, in common practice what is done is that, so suppose uh, we have uh, this bed is there. So, we will be having a bed, uh, packed bed similar to the adsorption. So, suppose this is the bed and we have some water which is coming and that water uh, is there and that water is containing suppose calcium, okay, magnesium etcetera. So, this is there. So, calcium C A 2 plus M G 2 plus will be there. Now, in this packed bed, it will contain a resin 
or some material which will be having suppose this is the resin and this is having sodium. So, this will be having N A plus. Now, when the water will go through this pack bed actually the water which is coming out now the water will contain more amount of N A, but it will not be containing calcium and magnesium. So, the bed will get exhausted and the bed will now contain calcium, it may contain magnesium, but N A will be exchanged. So, this is how it works and after some time when all the resins will get exhausted. Okay, so, that means each of the resin will not contain any sodium. So, it again there will be only calcium, magnesium and this, this particular thing will be immobile. So, that is there. So, after some time what is done? The back washing there is done or the uh, regeneration of the bed is done. So, how it is done? So, in place of that now in the back washing condition or regeneration condition a slurry or a slurry containing NaCl will be sent. Now, this NaCl this everything will be replaced. So, Ca will be coming out in the backwash condition the water which will be coming out after some time it will contain very high amount of calcium and magnesium, but this Na will replace this Ca and Mg. So, again the original condition where lot of N A is there on the resin will be there and that is the whole bed will be regenerated and that can be used in the next cycle. So, this is how it works. So, in common practice the raw water is passed through the bed of the resin. The resin is made up of uh, like uh, polymerized organic compounds and they are formed into porous matrix. Now, there are commercially available resins which may be there depending upon the uh, concentration of calcium magnesium of any other ion that has to be exchanged. So, we have to cross check that ok. Typically in water softening sodium is exchanged for cations. So, generally we will be having sodium based resin ok. So, when the bed becomes saturated with the exchange ion. So, that means all the resins uh, Na has been replaced by calcium and magnesium. So, under that condition this bed is uh, regenerated by passing a concentrated solution of sodium back through the bed. So, uh, this is there. So, and thus we can regenerate the bed and we can use the bed further. Now, there are there are some fundamental concepts for ion exchange. So, one of the most important thing is ion exchange resin. So, which type of ion exchange resin has to be used or which type of uh, that depends upon the, uh, the ions that have to be exchanged. So, the most common uh, polymeric resin matrix is like a cross linked polystyrene to which different charged functional groups are attached by covalent bonding. So, we can manipulate this ok and little bit uh, while creating this resin matrix or uh, producing this uh, resin matrix and then like divinyl benzene is used as a cross linking agent with the styrene. A higher DVB cross linked material provides a more stable resin, but it may result in slower ion exchange kinetics. So, that has to be cross check that how much cross linking we have to do because we do not if the kinetics is slow. So, that means we will re be requiring a bigger bed for treatment of same uh, flow rate of water. So, we have to cross check that how much cross linking has to be done uh, though the it, it this resin will be more stable, but uh, this these things we have to cross check. So, that why we have to carry out experiments at the lab scale also for determining all these parameters. Now, there are number of functional groups which are possible and the all the functional groups can be categorized into four different categories. So, uh, like strongly acidic, 
So, in this case the example is of like sulfonate functioning may be there. Then weakly acidic where carbox carboxylate functional group may be present strongly basic or weakly basic. So, strongly basic quaternary amine in the weakly base, uh, basic case we have tertiary amine. So, we have a resin on which different functionalities can be there and this we can decide beforehand depending upon our requirement the ions to be exchanged, the concentration of ion which is there and the kinetics also because we have to cross check with respect to kinetics that how much time it will take for exchange to happen. So, that is there. Now, cation exchange regions contain mobile positive ions such as hydrogen or sodium. So, they are uh, they are attached to the immobile functional acidic group such as sulfonic or carboxylic group. So, this plus charge will be always be attached to this minus charge. Now, the functional groups are fixed to the resin matrix or the backbone. So, this is there uh, uh, and these are the cation uh, ion exchange sites. So, these sites where these functionalities are there, they are called as sites cation exchange sites. The number of sites is always finite, when, but we desire the number of sites to be highest possible. So, this is there. So, and when all the resins have been exchanged, so will the uh, this resin cannot be used further and it has to be regenerated the way it has been told earlier. So, depending upon the regeneration solution may be different depending upon the ion which is getting exchanged or what is the actual original. Uh, immobile functional group which is there. So, uh, that will depend upon that also. So, whether it is weakly acidic, highly acidic all those things are very very important parameters when understanding these ion exchange regions. So, we can see here the cross linking is there. So, higher the cross linking stability will be higher, but kinetics will be slow. So, this is the fixed anion which will be fixed, but this is the mobile counter ion which can be exchanged. So, it is possible to exchange these ions and these can be regenerated also. So, this is there. So, this is how the this is the schematic of organic cation exchange bead which is there. Now, going further uh, there are strong cation exchange reactions which are possible. So, strong here does not mean that uh, the physical strength of the resin. Here it means the with respect to functional group. So, uh, rather to the uh, like what type of functional groups are there and uh, uh, whether the cation exchange how much cation exchange is possible we can can we replace all the cations or not. So, all these things are there. So, it depends upon the electrolyte strength in which the functional group of the resin is dissociated completely it in, in its ionic form. So, this is there suppose, so this is the resin you can see here and here the calcium is there in the calcium carbonate is there. So, we can see here that it is replacing, similarly it is replacing the calcium chloride also in this case. So, both are possible So and uh, this particular sign denotes the resin. So, and uh, so, this is the total resin matrix and in this case this is the fixed anion and this is the section which can be replaced. So, this is strong cation exchange uh, reactions are possible under that condition. There are weak cation exchange reactions are also possible. So, under that condition uh, the resins are able to remove the carbonate hardness. Okay. So, calcium from carbonate hardness can be removed, but they cannot remove the calcium from non carbonate hardness. So, they can only perform this particular first reaction, they cannot perform the second reaction under the uh, simple weak cation exchange regions which are there. So, and they can be easily be, but these can be easily be regenerated by using a strong acid. So, this is possible. So, uh, there are different types of possibilities of 
ion exchange also uh, within different ion exchange regions. Now, what are the different ion exchange mechanism and kinetics? So, the rate of ion exchange depends upon the rates of various transport mechanisms which, which get carried out in the bed okay. and depending upon the ion to be removed and how the ion moves towards the resin and how, how quickly or how faster the ion exchange reaction takes place. So, the number of parameters are there. Now, there are different uh, steps within the mechanism. So, how the ion exchange mechanism works it is shown here. Now, we always want each of these steps to be fastest possible. So, this is whatever is desirable. So, as in the adsorption case here also the first step is the movement of the ions from the bulk solution to the film which is or the boundary layer which is surrounding the exchange solid. So, always uh, the bead which is there it will always contain some liquid film. So, the movement of ion from here up to the liquid film. So, this is the first step. Now, the diffusion of ions through the film to the solid surface. So, here how quickly the ions diffuse across the film. So, this is there this is the second step diffusion of ions through the film. Then diffusion of ions inward through the pores of the solid to the exchange site. So, this is the third step that how quickly within the solid the, the pores which are there. So, how quickly the ion moves uh, through those pores inside into the uh, exchange uh, uh, resin. So, that we have to see. Then exchange of the ions by the reaction. Okay. So, there will be some exchange reaction will be taking place that may be strong that may be weak and how quickly this exchange reaction take place. So, this is also very important. Now, in the adsorption case generally here the conditions stop, but for ion exchange there are more steps because the exchange ion will come out through the pores of the solid surface. So, we have to see that the exchange ions should come out through the pores of the solid surface, then diffusion of the exchange ion through the again the boundary layer or film and movement of the exchange ion into the bulk solution. So, these are the different steps. Now, here whether depending upon the molecular size of the exchange ion. So, here uh, Na plus or Ca 2 plus of what type of ions have to be exchanged we cross check. So, pores are very important none of the places the pore diffusion should be controlling we always desire the exchange of ion should be the rate controlling step or it should be the slowest step and we always want this slowest step to be the fastest possible. And we desire the cross linking in such a manner that the pore diffusion should never be a rate controlling step. Also the flow rate of the water uh, to be treated through the bed can decide or help in uh, uh, deciding whether the what should what will be the thickness of the boundary layer. So, we do not want the thickness of the boundary layer to be uh, big. So, that this step or the second step is never the rate controlling step and similarly we can uh, through the flow rate we can decide uh, minimize the resistance with respect to the first step and the last step. So, uh, these are the various mechanisms uh, steps within the ion exchange. And the overall thing is that we do not want any of these uh, steps to be slowest. Uh, we want this step to be the controlling and within this step we want it to be the faster because this we can manipulate or we can decide uh, while deciding the resin itself. And all other steps the resistances we can minimize by properly deciding the operating 
parameters with respect to treatment. Now, for a column of resin, the exchange reactions begins to saturate the upper levels first before the so suppose the flow rate is from the top. So, initially this zone will be utilized then this zone then this zone. So, we can see here the movement this is like mass transfer zone in the adsorption. So, in the effluent concentration is coming out C A here and inlet concentration is C 0. Here only this section of bed has been fully utilized this section of bed is being used and this section of bed is not used at all till now. After some time the exchange this, this is the exhausted bed okay. and this is the bed in which the removal is happening and this is unutilized bed. As soon as it will reach a point like here the this section has been utilized and the this particular section reaches the outer end of the border outer end of the bed or the last section of the bed. So, under that condition the concentration which will be coming out it will be now moving towards the initial concentration range and after some time this C D when whole of the bed will get exhausted it will become equal to C 0. So, that means no further cation exchange is happening and we have to cross check uh, we have to regenerate the bed. So, this is there. So, this is called the uh, wave the progress of the saturation wave through the column results in a wave of saturation as shown in the figure and uh, we always want to model this and second thing is that we want to uh, we want it is always desirable to reach this concentration uh, maximum time uh, delay possible. So, we want uh, this concentration to be reached in very long duration and before that a very large amount of water should have been treated. So, this is desirable. If the samples are taken at the bottom of the column and a curve of the increasing concentration is detected as shown in figure. So, this is called breakthrough curve and this is similar to the curve that we have studied for adsorption. So, uh, this is like adsorption breakthrough curve here we have ion exchange breakthrough curve. At some uh, point in the time the effluent concentration uh, the effluent concentration will exceed the design criteria. So, the design criteria could be like uh, with respect to what application we are going. So, sometimes the design criteria the final concentration or the breakthrough concentration will be set by the uh, standards. So, suppose any arsenic has to be removed. So, under that condition we will always desire that the, it, the arsenic should be within the drinking water standard. So, that means, C B will be the concentration at the as decided by the standards. Uh, sometimes it is possible that we may have to treat the water in a second stage. So, we may decide the value of C, uh, C by C 0 depending upon our requirements. So, like it may be 0 0.1, it may be 0 0.05. So, this we may decide and uh, the design criteria also uh, suppose for we have to go for calcium and magnesium ion removal. So, under that condition if the water has to be used suppose for steam generation. So, there will be a certain maximum limit uh, with respect to calcium and magnesium which is which can be used for steam generation without any scaling in the pipelines. So, under those conditions uh, we have a set value which is as per our requirement. So, we can always desire the breakthrough concentration and depending upon that we will come to know that whether the column is out of service and then we can we have to regenerate the column before actually we can use the water for the run. Now, so this is the type of curve that will come out if uh, suppose the concentration of uh, gas is there or concentration of any pollutant in the effluent is has to be cross checked. So, like 
uh, in the initial case so C A C B C C C D. So, this is there the same as C A C B C C C D. So, this is the breakthrough time and that breakthrough time can be decided uh, depending upon a number of parameters and similarly uh, C D where we have actually reached the C 0 concentration it is. So, uh, this time up to this time the bed is totally exhausted, but the our main point is this not this and but we can always want this C D and C C to be same and the bed to be exhausted at the same time. Now, as we studied earlier the time of breakthrough this time which is there uh, or the volume treated at breakthrough. So, uh, if I can write volume treated at breakthrough or time for breakthrough these this is a function of a number of variables and what are those variables. So, we have to decide first the first variable is the resin itself that what type of resin we are going to use. Okay. So, this is very very important consideration that once we decide okay, this is the resin that we are going to use then based upon that we can perform these small scale tests in the lab okay. and from that we can decide a number of uh, parameters under which we can predict tentatively and then we can carry out some confirmation experiment etc. So, resin is first uh, parameter then it will be the concentration of different ions that has to be exchanged. So, we have to cross check that what are the different concentration of ions in the water that has to be treated and that depends also the concentration of other ions it may be possible that it will depend upon the other ions for which we are not exchanging and what are their affinity towards the ion which will be exchanged. So, suppose the N A has to be exchanged and the N A uh, from the resin is coming out in the water and the water is having good affinity for that. So, the kinetics will improve very tremendous. So, we can use the smaller bed for same treatment of water. So, concentration of the uh, uh, ions that have to be exchanged, concentration of other ions that is also important and their affinity with respect to different ions. Then in addition to that the height of the bed is very important that how much is the height of the bed. So, it will depend upon that condition also. It will depend upon the flow rate of the bed and the particle size of the resins also. It is possible that flow rate, diameter all those are the parameters on which this volume at breakthrough and the time at breakthrough will be dependent. So, we can carry out a number of experiments we can use the model similar to the adsorption packed bed and we can uh, predict the breakthrough time and depending upon that model that we have, we have developed we can decide that okay, what flow rate we are going to use what, uh, uh, what height what diameter. So, that we can maximize the exchange usage rate uh, resin usage rate we want the all the resin to be used properly okay, and we want the breakthrough time or volume at the breakthrough time to be highest possible. So, this way we can do this. So, whatever is the theory some of the models with respect to adsorption packed bed can be used in the ion exchange uh, bed also and we can develop a similar theory or approach for design of uh, ion exchange resin packed beds. So, uh, this is there and we will try to continue this uh, and understand the different features of uh, ion exchange resins in the next lectures onwards and uh, we will try to know that what is the exchange capacity, uh, what is the separation factor, so uh, how to use them and there are number of other things that we must understand with respect to ion exchange resin as well as how it works in the bed itself. So, all these theories and other things we will try to understand in the next lecture.
So, we will continue with the ion exchange resin later on. Thank you very much.